the Bongcast. Yo, cannabis lovers, welcome to the Bongcast, a podcast about people in cannabis. My name is Matt Meredith, and I am your host, your guide, whatever you want me to be, really. And today, on the second episode, I am very proud to introduce Patrick and Jay, the Bird Rock Advisors. So we have Patrick Kilcoin and Jay Frensos. They are two gentlemen that live in San Diego, California. They're running their own consulting company specifically for cannabis companies, and they helped found a company called MTrack, which is a cashless payment system designed for dispensaries to use for not only their consumers, but also B2B uh, in order to help fix this you know, cash problem that there is in the cannabis industry currently because of the federal regulations that are uh, blocking the use of bank systems for, uh, for cannabis. So please enjoy these two amazing gentlemen as we tell great stories, have some good laughs, and a lot of kush. Without any further ado, Patrick and Jay on the Boncast. I was like, Slapping dude, I was like, Slapping oh my God, base. oh my God, I'm smoking weed right now with Paul Rudd in Amsterdam and with his wife. Cotton Mouth Media. Yeah, baby, girl, you're so damn fine, dog. Wanna know if I can hear it from behind, dog. I'm sipping on you like some fine wine, dog. When it's over, I'm custody. The standard clap here. Break. All right, dudes. Welcome to the, uh... The second episode of the Bongcast. Thank you. The Bongcast. Thanks for having us. Yeah, man. Wait, is it okay to smoke on here? Yeah. Or, uh, Just no <laughs> bongs, right? I mean, you should have a bong in here for mid mid show. We really should. You have some questions? Yeah. I have a few answers. The Bongcast means business, dude. And we got a bong now. Just give them a quick like synopsis on like what you guys do. In the, in the cannabis industry, or not a quick synopsis. Just tell me what you do in the cannabis industry. I think we're pretty multifaceted. A um, little bit of marketing, a little bit of photography, play around, a lot of business development. Um, you know? Yeah, so we've been uh, just making our way through the industry. Um, like Jay said, we started with marketing, and uh, we helped found a company called M-Track, that does cashless payments, so people can use credit and debit at dispensaries. Uh, so that kind of brought us in a different direction. Um, we stepped away from that to uh, kind of pursue some other opportunities in cannabis. Lots going on, and uh, well, we want to be able to kind of shape the landscape a little bit. And stepped away to do that, and that's what we've been up to for the last couple of months. We're uh, we're about to launch a few brands, so stay tuned. Follow us around on. Instagram and YouTube, but uh, we're going to be launching a few brands over the next few months. It's going to be exciting. But so what was that like being involved with, you said you started the company? Uh, or you helped start it? Yeah, we were you know amongst the founding group, so it was going to start up mode with uh, less than 20 people. And uh, Jay was the marketing director and I was the uh, IT director, so it kind of helped uh, shape the company early on and uh, it was a really fun experience. It was, it was good for us because we got to um, get outside of like just the cannabis industry. We got to see you know the tech side of it, the, the money side of it, the business side of it, and not just you know the consumers at the dispensary. And you know it was, it was a good experience, a lot of learning and right. it, was, it was good. What would, would you say is like the number one takeaway you guys had from that experience? That's tough. Yeah, um, we learned a lot. It's uh, definitely it can be a broad answer, if that's the answer. Definitely learned a lot. Um, you know, I knew a little bit about tech and computers and whatnot, but I got to learn a lot about a, like a, a space I've never really been in. And uh, Patrick taught me a lot along the way. So the most I learned was probably you know that there's a lot more than just getting high in the cannabis industry and some of these other industries that are clashing. That um, you know, you need a lot of different things to work to really get a business up and running. Yeah. I learned a lot about uh, just finances, like how money moves. You know, being a a company that was essentially you know uh, working to 
accept credit and debit in a space where that hadn't been done before. Um, There's a lot to learn about the legality of that. So it was, uh, you know, lots of uh, lots of learning the whole time, and just about like just, like totally new stuff. Um, the finance and banking end of things, I didn't know anything about. So that was really cool. Now we know. <laughs> so that's cool. Do you guys feel like getting the the finance experience and that banking experience is what led to kind of you guys, you know, being more involved in like. I don't know, I feel like you guys touch a lot of different types of sub-genres, you know, within business, and that's interesting, because I feel like that's hard to do, you know, it's like wearing a lot of different hats. Yeah, we've gotten very lucky with the, the route we've taken. Um, it started, you know, dispensary level, you know, as at a receptionist at one point, deli- uh, delivering weed mm-hmm. into, you know, taking photos, making little videos, tutorials, um, and then pass that on to, you know, try to start our own little marketing company. And that's when we kind of came across the whole the te- tech industry, got to help found m So, yeah, we got to wear a lot of hats. Not, you know, not everyone gets to touch all those bases from the get-go, but the last two years have been fast. We've learned yeah. a lot. And we work really well together. I think that's been you know, a big plus is that like generally where one of us has a weakness, the other uh, has a strength. So uh, it's been beneficial for us and you know, folks we work with because you know, between the two of us, we always have an answer, um, almost always have an answer. Uh, right. Yeah. And we you know, are always learning new things. So. You feed each other confidence too, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. It's been good. And we're able to check each other too. It goes both ways. What, what exactly, sorry, I don't know if we said it, what exactly does M-Track do? They were the cashless payment system that um, doesn't always have to be cashless, but you can go into a dispensary and use your credit and debit at the point of sale instead of have to worry about bringing in cash. But it's not just for the consumer, it's for the, uh, the B2B aspect of it too. A lot of these companies are sending drivers to pick up you know, upwards of $100,000 cash. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, it's not safe anymore. There's been a lot of robberies in the industry. Um, a lot of cash seized yeah. so we've seen a lot of st- crazy stuff behind doors so you know that B2B aspect where the uh, you know they have M-Track in their ecosystem and they can send cash directly to that business is it digitally a, is it a form of cryptocurrency basically there's a blockchain like, yeah. ledger that's uh, another kind of cool differentiation and um, aspect that kind of sucked us in um, so it adds a really nice layer of security to the system because so you're basically able to have that immutable ledger that comes with blockchain mm-hmm. uh, for every single transaction. Uh, so for the B2B aspect, it's especially strong. So you have proof that funds were transmitted, when they were transmitted. You can attach an invoice with a smart contract. Uh, you know, PDF can be easily attached to that invoice. Um, so I don't know, a, a cool layer. In terms of cryptocurrency, it's not, uh, it doesn't have like a block. Uh, like a Bitcoin or Dash backbone, anything like that. It's its own crypto with a one-to-one ratio. So there's no trading of it. It's just used uh, as essentially credit part of the uh, backbone of, of our system. Right. It's not used for anything else. And uh, it always has a it's like one-to-one getting, ratio. like getting credit with any other store. Safety and compliance. Yeah. It's a, an elegantly simple system. We need a lighter. You need a lighter? Yeah. Go oh, grab a lighter, yeah. You got that boring company flamethrower on <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got a flamethrower around? For those, for those a, listening yeah. that may or may not have seen it, we, um, at this point, I think we've released it by the time this will be up. Yeah, we, have, we definitely have. Um, but we have a video um, where we take the boring company flamethrower, boring company started by Elon Musk, and we use that to light a giant joint. Uh, or a big joint, however you would like to. Yeah, cannabis joint. Exactly. Big old it, joint. It was cannabis inside the joint, yes. <laughs> one half ounce in each of them. We each had one. And a flamethrower. <laughs> and nah. a flamethrower. Two flamethrowers. Not just one flamethrower, <laughs> but two flamethrowers. Yeah. And now for the bong cast, we're going to smoke our first bong. Cheers. Cheers. When was the first time you guys ever smoked weed? Cheers. Like together or in life? Just in life. Each individually. Patrick first. <laughs> I thought it'd be like junior year of high school. I was a late bloomer. Uh, my friend Ryan and I uh, smoked. There's some kind of like, uh, 
anomaly like in space I think like a comet or something so we said we were going out <laughs> smoked a joint so we're looking at the stars looked at the stars for a second got really high it was pretty uneventful so you were 16 though uh, and I was like junior year of high school was that 16 I don't know 16, 16 or 17, 17. it's about when you get your license yeah. in, that, in that age range I didn't get what my license until I was 18. Late bloomer, late bloomer. <laughs> These East Coast mass holes. Yeah. I didn't have a okay. drink until I was like 28, so. <laughs> That's when he met me. <laughs> when did you, when did you first smoke? Um, the first time I smoked, my mother will kill me for saying this, but it was with her brother. We were driving down to Gatlinburg, Tennessee for a family vacation. Nah, about... I think I was going into freshman year, end of eighth grade freshman year, and my uncle let my aunt, his sister, me and my cousin smoke. And, uh, you know, got high a few times that trip. But then when we got back, you know, I didn't smoke for maybe another year and a half. Mm -hmm. But that was the first time I smoked. I was about 14 in that age range. But then I became a mathlete. And then, uh, yeah. Wait, so you were 14? Yeah, 14, I'd say. Damn, dude. On the way to Gatlinburg in a uh, minivan. Crazy. How about you? Me. How old was I when I first smoked weed? It's funny because I haven't thought about this in a long time. But um, I remember the first time I smoked weed clear as freaking day. And uh, I was 16. And so I don't know. Would you, do you call that a late bloomer? Sixteen smoking weed, a late bloomer. Well, I feel like all that's my pretty friends normal. have been smoking for years since probably. But like I feel the, like that's pretty right normal because for me, for me, like what I would even like advise and like request to other people out there is like wait till you're eighteen. To uh, yeah, try I it. think that's a just because just because of your cognitive development. Yeah, but um, but yeah. Anyways, I was sixteen, and uh, I was. We just finished our basketball season. So it was my junior year, and we just played our last league game. So we're like, oh, yeah, dude, like, we're not getting tested no more. Like, yeah. season's over. And uh, so we went to my buddy Chase house. And uh, I don't know if I should be saying his last name. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Chase <laughs> Look for it on Instagram. <laughs> um, but we went to his man cave, and... Uh, literally like 15 of us just smoking weed and uh, they say you don't get high your first time and like i got high <laughs> that was pretty baked, I, think. I got yeah. pretty freaking baked I I had a bunch of honestly i was <laughs> so i was i remember so vividly like the first movie i watched like the thing i was watching like what i was doing when i was first high was i was just lying down in a couch similar to this one and i just felt like i could hear paul rudd saying things <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, being super awkward and then I was lying down on the couch and I could just feel like uh, things were just like rushing through my body I had just like the craziest body high and I was like yeah dude being high is shit <laughs> shit classic <laughs> rud narration <laughs> I didn't feel high my first time I just got really hungry and my eyes were really red so yeah. I don't know if that's called being high or that's how I felt. I remember getting so fired up. I ran to the mirror and my eyes were red and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hot. No, dude, I hate it when my eyes get red. Honestly, I always put eye drops in. Roto. Yeah, I do now. Nah, we're, we're big Roto, Roto fans. Crazy. Yeah. I, Roto, if you want to sponsor us, we go through a bottle a week or we lose it or someone steals it. Yeah. If you could make like I a, heard, a, a heard, leash for your belt, that'd be great. <laughs> I heard Rotos are... You can get one of those on Amazon. But I heard Rotos are... Uh, bad for your eyes they're probably terrible for your eyes I'm definitely gonna get eye cancer I use them every single day no you should use regular you gotta use regular eye drops and those eye drops Uh, I've been I've been uh, using the clear eyes lately they don't I don't even know if they work the guy from Ferris Bueller 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 that's classic Ben dude should I go live (laughs) should we just like go go live on our Instagrams so what did you guys wait what did you guys start doing before you were in the cannabis industry before I was in the cannabis industry. Yeah, before you were in the cannabis industry, like what were you doing? I was doing landscaping in Cincinnati, Ohio for a company called JPK Landscaping. 
Um, one Ohio. of my best. Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. My peoples. Dude, um, I have a great story about Ohio, <laughs> and it's relevant to weed, actually, when you're finished. Don't let uh, it forget. I was doing landscaping there, and um, was just finishing up at a community college, and uh, wanted to get into the cannabis industry, wanted to move, wanted to explore. Um, I don't know. So I packed up my car when I was 25, drove out here to California, and for the first six months, just kind of bounced around. Had fun, traveled, went up to San Francisco, Mexico a few times, and then um, when I got back, that's really when I wanted to get into the cannabis industry and started delivering weed. And how old are you now? 28. Turned 29 two weeks. Crazy. Two You're weeks. You're going to be 29 probably by the time I release this. Forbes, 30 yeah. under 30. I'll release this for your birthday. Forbes, you out there? 30 under 30. Right here. This is important, Forbes. Damn, dude, that's a call. <laughs> Patrick, what about you? What did you do before you were in the cannabis industry? Uh, I've had a couple lives. I went to school for design. and he, He's a cat. He has nine lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm on like three or four right now. So yeah, I went to school for design and I uh, did that for a bit. Worked for a marketing company that did direct mail and variable data printing and uh, did a bunch of different roles there um, from design to project management and then went out on my own to do marketing and advertising um, and design, did that for a bit and then I uh, wanted to get into technology more so I pivoted to IT and uh, worked for a technology company in Massachusetts um, who was nice enough to uh, support my dream of moving out of Massachusetts and I moved to San Diego where I worked remotely for them for a bit um, and then I uh, met Jay and we started doing more marketing and kind of uh, artistic uh, creation again. So I kind of got back into that. And What artistic um, creation is that? You know, so we did a lot of uh, product photography for um, you know, cannabis and uh, just building up uh, you know, social media profiles and things like that. So uh, it's nice to get back into the creative mindset again. Mm -hmm. Um, so then ultimately left the IT job uh, to pursue our marketing company, um, and then the rest is history. And now you guys are Bird Rock Bros. <laughs> our we're, company's Bird Rock Advisors. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're a lot of things. <laughs> but you're the bros. <laughs> we're, uh, we're doing a bunch of different things, um, but we do got the, the new brands coming out and we're excited to release them. Are you guys willing to talk about your brands or um, the current projects you're working on? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. General gist. <laughs> um, so we're uh, we're really interested in like the CBD space. Uh, we know that it's more than just the you know getting the high part of it. it. Gives you that sedative, relaxing feeling. You know the anti-inflammatory, anti-spasmatic side all that crazy fun stuff but uh we saw a market for it and there's a market in a lot of other states that don't really have the knowledge that we've seen here and have learned here and um we're ready to take a few cbd products to market across the nation ultimately we both got into the industry to help people and uh that's been a focus you know we both grew up recreationally using as we you know talked about smoking from a young age whatnot but at a certain point, you realize like it's not just you know like a, f a fun thing. It's like actually helps people. Um, so with CBD, we also you know see there's a, a huge ability to help a, a shitload of people uh, with what actually you know physically like causes positive effects from cannabis. You know THC is great for getting high, but CBD and other cannabinoids are actually what help people. So it'll be great to be able to deliver that help to a lot of people. Oh yeah. Exciting stuff. Yeah. Exciting yeah. stuff. <laughs> CBD is dope. No, CBD is definitely... Um, you use CBD? I honestly don't. I feel like I should. And I want to test, test it out. If you guys want me to do a review um, or be a test subject, dude, it honestly would be cool to do like a test for like a month. Like how Absolutely. CBD affects my body yeah. compared to when I didn't. As long as he vlogs about it, we're in. Yeah. <laughs> because we're going to need it everywhere. I'll vlog about it. I'll vlog about it. Nah, it's good for, um, you know, arthritis. We use our, uh, you know, we're always typing or on our phones or. Right. And it, you know, it really messes with my fingers and I imagine a lot of other people's. 
But um, those pain salves and you know those really help me out a lot. And you know the tinctures just for. You know, tinctures. Every... I want to try the tinctures and see how that affects me, just like yeah. on a daily basis. You know? Especially you, man. You're fucking. You're always running around. You know, making videos, editing, photos, testing products, smoking. <laughs> um, it's hard to you know just slow down and relax, and you know tinctures can really help with that. Yeah. For sure, dude. For sure. I just got a robe. And you just got a, a a rub a robe a robe yeah a I robe. just got a robe and some slippers and it's been honestly very relaxing okay <laughs> so I just got like some CBD, is that, I is that like the secret CBD, to life <laughs> I feel like some CBD tinctures would be all I need to complete that equation yeah and a candle and a candle and like a gold toilet you so know if you, you want to get in there like too, that's <laughs> in my bathroom <laughs> <laughs> oh so my story about Ohio before I forget it so crazy so. Imagine this. This is crazy that I brought. I already brought up Paul Rudd, dude. So this Paul circle Rudd. is going. This this circle is going full story. The I love story you, man. is going full Paul circle. Paul Rudd narration. So Paul Rudd. So I'm in. Excuse me. I'm in Amsterdam. Rewind one year ago, right? I was in Amsterdam and I was traveling through Europe at the time, right? And so I was in Amsterdam, and I was in this coffee shop. For those who don't know what a coffee shop is in Amsterdam, that's a cannabis cafe, basically. So. I'm, I'm doing my thing, I'm rolling my joint, I'm smoking my weed, and I'm at this table and I've got this, no, not this camera, a different camera. I have a camera sitting um, like on in front of me or whatever, and I've got a hat, a USA hat on, and I've got long ass hair, and I'm sitting <laughs> next to this couple, this random couple, and like we start chatting it up, right? There's this redhead girl and then this guy. This dude looks, I kid you not, exactly like Paul Rudd. <laughs> Identical from his freaking eyebrows to his hair to I kid you not the sound of his voice He had the same freaking laugh as Paul Rudd dude. I swear this guy was the spitting image of him And his name was Colin though, so it wasn't him. <laughs> Colin Rudd <laughs> <laughs> His brother don't you guys know and uh, this guy was a defense attorney and so oh, Colin I hope you see this video one day <laughs> and uh, Actually, hopefully I'll send this to him dude and maybe he can see this but like <laughs> I was like, Slap dude, I was like, Slap oh my God, base. oh my God, I'm smoking weed right now with Paul Rudd in Amsterdam and with his wife. And we get in a cab and we drive, the, he, they pay for the cab, Paul Rudd pays for the cab, and we drive to the Van Gogh Museum, and we go to the Van Gogh Museum, we walk in through All the right. exit, get yelled at, because we're way too stoned, so like, then we walk back in through the, the entrance, and we stay in there for like four hours, see the Van Gogh Museum, and it was amazing. And like then we walked back, and I took their photos like in random places and sent it to them afterwards when I came back to the U.S. And it was crazy. And I was like, damn, dude, I smoked weed with Paul Rudd in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't him? It was, it, was, it was not him. It was this guy, Colin, defense Colin. attorney. Colin. But Colin, shout out to you, bro. That was sick. And your wife, she was sick too. I think her name was Stephanie. But I hope you guys better. enjoyed your trip. It was dang. It was dang. That's like classic Amsterdam. What are you guys smoking on? These rolling papers are weak. I'll tell you what. Yeah. We just needed like a raw supply. Shout out, Ra. Uh, Josh, can you uh, sponsor us, please? <laughs> we'll come adopt a puppy. So, we talked about this before and last time I hung out with you guys, but another great question I did want to ask was, um, what is your opinion on um, Prop 64? That is like, a really great question. Like, how do you, sorry, how do you, like, feel about, I'll rephrase that, how do you feel about Prop 64 being in place and Prop 215 now no longer being a thing? Um... I'm excited. Uh, all these licensed legal shops, they've put a lot of work into getting up and running and you know, doing all the right things in the community and with the government and you know, I, I think they really deserve their chance now that all these Prop 215 shops are shutting down. Um, they're going to see much higher volume and you know, it gives them a chance to really live out their vision of what their dispensary or collective could be and it's gonna be exciting. The, the the it's about to grow like crazy. What about you? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's definitely a lot of criticisms of 64, and uh, I know a lot of like medical patients, for instance, 
um, have been affected by you know the changes of the laws, um, like core medical patients. Uh, so sixty four is not perfect, but I agree with everything Jay said. And, you know, it's progress. Um, I think it's a, a step in the right direction. And seeing how other states are implementing um, in ways that aren't necessarily perfect either. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, positive aspects of 64 and we're moving in the right direction at least. So so you guys feel like Prop 64 is good for you, but like, how do you feel like most businesses are feeling about Prop 64 overall? Probably like they're paying a lot more taxes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's necessarily like better for us. I more speak in terms of like the the patient or like the the customer. I think uh, Jay was as well. So I think it's more of a, like people have access to a lot more products now. They have access to like, products that have been tested by labs. Consumers of California. Yeah, exactly. So I, ultimately, businesses are are paying more taxes, but that's the whole the whole point anyway. So I don't know. another way businesses might be affected is. Everything has to be more compliant, so there's a lot more regulations. Uh, I'm sure they're having to hire a lot more people. We've seen that, uh, so that you know that's always a pain in the ass having to expand your staff, train your staff in different areas. Um, that, like I said, I wasn't kidding about the taxes, so that's affected them. Um, inventory is a mess at a lot of places right now. It's mm-hmm. you know it's such high volume that you know these POS systems weren't built for mass expansion from the get-go so you know they're gonna see their speed bumps as is everyone as patrick and i have as you have in this industry it's so new that um everyone's learning it's uh it's progress like patrick said but uh what doesn't kill you makes you stronger yeah i think that's what we have to deal with that's reality it's prop 64 and that's what we got to deal with and we can complain and we can change the laws if we want to and people can and they can try and that's that's dope but um, I'm definitely interested to see what happens you what's your outlook if you um, well so I'm an ancillary service and I think 2019 is going to be the year of ancillary services I think prop 64 is a good thing for ancillary services because if there's gray area it screws over um, photographers and content creators and marketers and consultants because I honestly think the people who are interested in the black market and being gray market or not following the laws, whether it be because you can't afford it, what what have you. But regardless, just by making that decision, like one, they probably don't have enough money to want to afford that in the first place. Or two, they could be dishonest or try to screw you over because they're they're in the black market and that's how they roll they're trying to save some dough and if they can cut corners they're gonna and I had an experience where it was white market even and I got screwed over so for me I'm stoked about it because I want to weed out the weak people that are being honestly like just dishonest and not empathetic about the people that they're doing business with yeah and uh, all you and you know anyone out here that's listening that you know you're, you you want advice on the cannabis industry like ask like you're really coming in for the first time is you know watch your back you know cover your tracks um, it's a cutthroat industry and uh, you want to build those really you want to you know build a foundation Free ashes. but um, I'm just in here that's my advice yeah, it's a uh, real cutthroat really just cover your cover your ass cover your tracks build build strong relationships yeah. Yeah, just make tough. make and friends. Make yeah, friends. 2018 definitely was a, a year we saw a lot of like the, the bad actors removed. You know, it's an industry where uh, worlds are colliding with people who are operating illegal businesses for years or gray market businesses for years, and a bunch of like money and investors and experienced business people kind of colliding. So in that, um, there's definitely been some fallout. Um, to here in San Diego, there was a dispensary investor who hired a hit out on another dispensary investor oh shit um, so that stuff's real and yeah, uh, as drake said would say this industry is cutthroat exactly so <laughs> yeah, it's uh gotta get something for the gram in here too <laughs> cheers dude hit it bro for get real the gram bro the gram
Did you finish your thought? Yeah. Cool. Massive um, mass. Do you feel like consumers are stoked about this? About the taxes? About the prop? 64? Absolutely not. With that being said, how do we communicate that taxes are a good thing with cannabis to the people... Like how, it's very difficult because you have two different groups of people right now. You have well, probably more than just two, but like I'm grouping it into black and white. You have the people who used to smoke weed all the time, who are used to black market prices, and then you have people who are not, who are willing to pay the prices because they don't know what it used to be. Um, like what? How do you how do you convince the people that it's okay now for the taxes, and then like because the people that are already okay with it, they're already okay with it. You don't need to convince them. How do you convince the people that it's okay? Because I think that's an important thing that. People really aren't advertising. Um, I would just say do more research because the you know the taxes are a good thing. It's they're going to help your city, your you know your local parks, your local schools, your local you know streets that you drive on. So it's improving the economy around you. Um, you know, but when people walk into a dispensary and they see twenty eight percent tax, thirty percent tax, they're naturally going to be pissed off. Um, I saw it firsthand, especially when we, you know, the dispensary I was working at went from, you know, medical only to recreational after January 1st last year. Um, so two years ago now, I guess. Um, so they were definitely pissed off, you know, but not everyone has done their research. It's like I said earlier, it's a new industry. Um, things are changing daily. It's hard to keep up with, but, uh. If you really read into it, I think, you know, as you said, they are a good thing. They're going to good, good, good things. Are the taxes going, it's going towards education mostly, like Colorado? I don't know all the specifics, but I know that, you know, each city has, like, specific tax brackets um, that I'm sure were paved out to help their city. And I think another big thing is just, like, safety, too. Like, uh, sort of after Prohibition, like, People could still keep making bathtub gin, uh, and people could still keep buying it, but ultimately people went to you know trusted liquor brands because they were producing like a product that w- wasn't poisonous. Right. I think uh, in our market we'll see that too, especially when you look at concentrates. If you take a flower that would fail a pesticide test and then make a concentrate out of it, it's like pretty terrible for humans to consume. So when you look at that compared to paying a little bit more. You know, less than you know thirty dollars on a on a hundred dollar order more uh, to not use that like terribly contaminated product, um, and that's just pesticides. When you bring like mold and other factors in, uh, the health effects of using like a black market product just uh, I think will speak for themselves. Well said, well said, Patrick. I randomly just thought of Patrick Star and how you get complete opposites. <laughs> Gringo Star? I see. You took my a, candy bar. Give me a couple. Now of I'm kebabs. gonna starve. <laughs> Have you guys ever had a negative experience with someone in cannabis? Never. Where they crossed you or? Never. Or dishonest. <laughs> Same exact response as the yeah, last Yeah, in high video. school, uh, I gave this kid 60 bucks once to get me some weed, and he got into his SUV and drove off. I'm not talking about how your friends <laughs> fucked you over in high school. <laughs> got a bag of oregano. That was nothing to do with the cannabis industry. You had a bunk friend. <laughs> was my friend, pal? You're not my guy, friend. He's not your friend anymore. Oregano. So I don't even mention his name because he doesn't even deserve the, the publicity. He actually runs political campaigns now. <laughs> True fact. Sounds like a snake. Give him away. Okay. That's hot. Is it? I don't even want it. Let's ask this out. Yeah. Any of these empty? This is empty. Um. Same to you. Any negative experiences? Uh, <laughs> are you allowed to talk about it? I've had some negative experiences. I've. I haven't had too many my myself. Um, but I've, I've seen a lot of behind the scenes, so I've seen a lot of other people do bad things to people, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, Patrick, Patrick and I have made our names off, like not burning many bridges. So haven't seen it. Nothing's happened to us too crazy. Like since we've started, but, um, I've personally seen some crazy things. That's what I was saying earlier. You know, 
just watch your back, make the right decisions, work with the right people, um, because people are out there to one up you no matter what, because it is a new industry. So I'll stay PG thirteen and yeah. Do you want to talk about it or no? No. I don't. <laughs> There's strong personalities in the industry. I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> it's all good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a good. I just like the response. Dude. I like the response. <laughs> Not burning bridges. That's good. That's a good way to be. Sketchy ass motherfuckers out there. That's a good way to be. Um, how often do you guys consume cannabis? And what's your preferred method? Patrick first. <laughs> uh, preferred method. I like rolling joints of like really nice, like true living organics flour. That's that's what's up. Respect. Um. Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, consumption, uh, basically whenever I feel like it. So that usually amounts to like, uh, several times a day in some capacity. <laughs> Respect. It's okay, I actually don't talk about how much I consume usually. Which Never is every, on camera? Which is every day. No, I do on camera, but like I definitely I consume every day. And then right like, there with you, brother. If there's like vacations or something, then I don't or whatever. But yeah, like, sickness, these types of things. Sure, sure. sure. I just eat edibles. Yeah, that happens too. What about you? How often do I consume cannabis? Yes, Mr. J. I consume cannabis pretty frequently. Um, I dab a lot, smoke a lot of joints. Stay away from the blunts unless there's a large group of people. But uh, I don't know. I'd say upwards of uh, ten times a day. A few dabs here, a few dabs there. But uh, you know, we're always working, we're always running around, so it's nice to ease the mind for a little bit and get back after it. Do you feel like it's therapeutic? Yeah, for sure. Um, I do it before I go to the gym, just to, like I said, relax, throw in some music, not have to think about everything else that's going on around us. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, before I go to bed. This helps me kind of zonk out at the end of the night after running around all day. But yeah, pretty frequently. We like micro dosing too. You know, like the vape pens are real nice. So you can take a like a hit or two. Like it's not like uh, you know you'd have to like roll up a whole joint or like you know get ripped on a bong anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you can take like a five milligram edible or something that's more like CBD and and THC. Um, there's so many different options now that. It's, it's cool. You can really, you know, medicate for different reasons. Like, uh, you may want to get really high and go to the gym, or you may not want to get like really high and go to the gym. Um, True fact. But or you can take CBD. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just tinctures, dude. We love CBD. <laughs> or CBD vapes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I'm too high to think of any other questions, so I think we're gonna call it here. Let's call it. It's Thanks. been fun. I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time. Thanks for coming down from LA. We're here in San yeah, Diego. <laughs> I gotta make my rounds to yeah. my people. Cottonmouth Media, Matt Meredith, the man, the myth, the legend. We appreciate you coming down here. Yeah. All your uh, all your followers out here, subscribers, keep subscribing. This shit is dope. Cottonmouth Media, yo. Oh, we out. <laughs> I did not expect it to slide like that. <laughs> Bomb. Uh, good shit, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this second episode with myself, Patrick, and Jay. We had a really great time. I had, well, at least I did. I know I had a great time. Uh, I think they had a great time too. Oh, and folks, you better put on your seatbelts for this third episode. We've got a real special guest for you. We got. The one and only Angela Mazzanti. So, stay tuned for that. So thanks again for listening or watching or whatever it is you did to this podcast. But I'm glad you did it. And hopefully I will see you in the next episode. Cottonmouth Media, yo. We out. But otherwise, yo, I'll see you guys in the next Cottonmouth Podcast. Peace. Yeah. Baby, girl, you're so damn fine, dog. Wanna know if I can hit it from behind, dog. I'm sipping on you like some flower, dog. When it's over, I press rewind, dog. Cotton Mouth Meteor.